From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 530, streaming now. Now at 530, Amazon customers are primed and ready to get some great deals. Coming up, how to make sure you're getting the best bargains out there. And laying the groundwork for a new era in Carmel. Why the new fire department headquarters will be more than just a place for firefighters. Topping our lineup today, staying safe at the polls amid the pandemic. The new plan being shared across the country to take voting outside. And intelligence officials expect criminals to try to mess with the upcoming election using cyber attacks, how voter registration databases are becoming a target, and what's being done to thwart the criminals' plans. And stores are advertising their holiday deals this week with everyone competing with Amazon's Prime event. Why you may, though, not need to rush to buy right now. It's the day bargain hunters have been waiting for. Amazon's long awaited Prime Day is here. John Matarese is working for you and breaking down how to get the best deals so you don't waste your money. Amazon Prime Day is finally here with big markdowns for two straight days. But this year, don't limit your shopping to just Amazon because other retailers are fighting back with sales of their own. With Thanksgiving night sales canceled this year and possibly even Black Friday itself, Amazon Prime Day is more important than ever. DealNews.com has three great tips for scoring big savings. One, if you want any Amazon Home items, these are some of the lowest prices of the year. Look for 40% off many Alexa devices, ring doorbells, fire sticks, and Kindles. Two, with deals changing hourly, Deal News says make watch lists. And three, Check prices at Best Buy and Target for their competing sales. Best Buy's early Black Friday will have 65 and 70 inch TVs as low as $550. Walmart will have 50 inch TVs as low as $200. And Target's deal days will have big markdowns on beauty and home products. As always, don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris, WRTV. Big day for the Carmel Fire Department. Groundbreaking for a new headquarters. City officials join developers for the ceremony today at 210 Veterans Way in Carmel. Once complete, the project will be home to the City of Carmel Fire Department headquarters, a new museum, community gathering spaces, and the interactive Survive Alive Village. This building is really designed to be a community building. It's designed to be very interactive. It's designed to um, be very user friendly. And we expect uh, the buildings to be used quite a bit. So um, we're very, very excited about this opportunity. The new headquarters will be five stories tall. The project is set for completion sometime next year. Kevin, that's a nice shot outside. Ah, isn't it beautiful? And uh, we're drying out the leaves. So we didn't have a lot of rain yesterday, but enough to get the leaves wet. So if you're in the process of raking those, they're starting to dry out. 70, that's temperature in Muncie right now. Other temperatures, upper 60s, pretty consistent above average, but not as warm as we will be during the day tomorrow. And the sky will stay clear tonight. Thank the wind, it's out of the southwest. That'll blow some leaves around, but wait till tomorrow because I think tomorrow's winds will be gusting well over 30, probably 35 mile per hour gusts in the afternoon. Tonight, it's mostly clear. The wind does calm down after sunset, 47 for the low. That's in Indianapolis. Outlying areas will be cooler in the lower to middle 40s. Let's call it a comfortable start to what turns out to be a warm day during the day tomorrow. Temperatures all the way into the mid-70s for the afternoon high with a mixture of clouds and sunshine and those strong wind gusts. When I come back, we'll talk about uh, the changes ahead for Thursday, and I'll show you a couple of uh, sunset or nearly sunset pictures from yesterday. They were a stark contrast because we had the rain around. You'll like to see that here in a couple minutes. Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine trial is now on hold. The company is investigating if a study participant's illness is related to the shot. It says illnesses are an expected part of any clinical study. Now, this is the second COVID vaccine trial to be put on hold because of illness. AstraZeneca and Oxford University's trial has not restarted in the U.S. It has restarted in other countries, though. The U.S. now has its first case of a patient becoming infected with COVID twice. 25-year-old man from Nevada, he became seriously ill the second time he got coronavirus. Medical experts say this shows that previous exposure to the virus may not guarantee immunity. The patient is the fifth person in the world to get coronavirus twice. Fall enrollment for Medicare is about to start this week. Consumer advocacy groups are seeing an increase in calls about Medicare's financial assistance programs. 
Fall enrollment officially begins Thursday. Seniors will get a chance to look at their coverage and make changes for 2021. So people can apply for it, you know, at any point during the year. Um, but if, you know, during the time that they're doing fall open enrollment, they're shopping around for plans, it might be a good time to also explore um, these programs, just depending on what plan you're going to pick. Sarah Murdoch is with the Medicare Rights Center. She says these financial help programs have always existed, regardless of whether there's been a public health crisis. The main problem in getting people to sign up is that not everyone is aware these programs are available. Another issue is that some people may not realize they're eligible. Murdoch encourages people to inquire about them, even if they're on the cusp of having too much income. There are deductions that can be made off of your income. Sometimes uh, certain types of income are counted in different ways. So, you know, just double check, even if you think you might be, not be eligible, it's still worth, you know, the 10 minute phone call to, to double check. Now, people may save up to $6,000 a year in terms of premiums and other health care costs. Enrollment closes on December 7th. United Nations Weather Agency is warning of increasing natural disasters. The report released in part with the World Meteorological Association says the number of people who need help worldwide because of hurricanes, forest fires, droughts and other events could jump 50 percent by the end of the decade. Now, there was some positive data here. Deaths attributed to these disasters dropped even as they became more frequent and intense. Well, next in our lineup for a second day in a row, major U.S. cities seeing long lines and record turnout of Americans voting early. The design plans just made available to help election leaders cope with pandemic requirements. Texas kicked off early voting today. People standing in long lines, voting in ways they've 
Never done before. Some lining up even before daylight on sidewalks outside major sports arenas to allow for more social distancing. Now, early voting started Monday in Georgia. Nearly 127,000 people cast their ballot. That is a record for the first day in the state. Now, there were, though, hours long wait times and in some locations, glitches that added to the challenges. Voting rights and having access to a safe and convenient polling location is going to really drive participation. Mike Leiden is with Street Plans, an urban planning and consulting firm that deals with transportation. They got a grant over the summer to put together a physical design plan for cities to best cope with social distancing, capacity restrictions, along with high voter turnout. How you can make use of streets and uh, public spaces to alleviate some of those issues and of course add some comfort elements like um, you know, tents or seats. Um, sanitation stations periodically throughout the, the queue. Now the plans cover all types of polling locations and how to properly do drive up, curbside, outdoor and indoor voting. Challenges for election officials when situations can change quickly. With COVID being this unknown variable, you could have a spike in the next three weeks in a certain location and that might totally change what was planned for an in-person indoor voting scenario to go outdoors. Street Plans is also offering free consulting assistance to cities. The plans are also free to download on their website. It's streetplans.com. Michelle Obama and LeBron James are trying to get people excited about voting. The two are sponsoring events around the country starting next week. Each of them have a group that encourages people to vote, but they are teaming up together to provide information, transportation, PPE, and other supplies at early voting sites. Now, still to come in our lineup, intelligence officials expect criminals to try to mess with the upcoming election using cyber attacks. We're going to take a look at how voter registration databases are becoming a target and what's being done to thwart the criminals' plans. The pandemic has created a heightened sense of awareness about the end of life. One trend we're seeing is with natural burials. Chris Conti found while they are gaining popularity before the pandemic, the demand has now increased significantly. Do not be fooled by the sound of his ATV. 
reserve is open for hiking only. It is the silence that John Christian Pfeiffer loves the most. 120 acres that still belong to nature. John Christian is their caretaker. Nature speaks, and you can hear it now in the trees, um, in the wind. But in these rolling Tennessee hills, if you look close enough, you can see that it's not just the land John Christian is caring for. You look at nature and you see them. There are 50 people buried throughout Taylor Hollow, natural burials. Their graves are marked by simple stones, no expensive caskets. Many were wrapped in quilts or buried in beds of wildflowers. This is the veterans um, funeral um, from just a few days ago, actually. A simplistic way to say goodbye that in recent months is gaining new attention. Well, I think with COVID, one of the things that everybody has done is they've started thinking about making a plan. Here in Taylor Hollow, they've buried 15 people this year. One of the deaths was COVID related. The pandemic has led to a sudden increase in the number of people looking at natural burial options. I think that COVID has heightened folks awareness of how important it is to make a plan. Natural burials are also giving families a way to grieve and mourn safely outside during COVID. Families can still have a gathering. Families can come together with their loved one. There is also a cost aspect driving the increased rise in natural burials. As American families struggle financially, natural burials offer an end-of-life option that's around $4,000, much less than the traditional burial, which runs around twelve grand. Gosh, it's beautiful out here today. There's also an environmental draw to the natural burial. Every year, Americans bury approximately 73,000 kilometers of hardwood boards, 58,500 tons of steel, and 1.5 million tons of concrete. It's not going to be for everyone, and that's okay. We're just another option in the toolbox that we have in, in working through our, our end of life processes and grief. And while planning for the end is never easy. I have families that come and they say, I saw Vicki and the butterflies. John Christian sees this as one place people can start. And it doesn't have to be focused on death. It ha it's focused on, on life and living. I mean, look around us, this place is alive. In Gallatin, Tennessee, I'm Chris Conti. A growing issue with the pandemic is an increasing number of people dealing with food insecurity. Right now, an organization is working to help those who are hungry in the Hoosier State. The nonprofit Million Meal Movement is working to help those in need right now. They are packaging a million meals for their annual marathon. In years past, the packaging is done by hundreds of volunteers all in one day, but due to the pandemic and the need to social distance, they will be packaging one million meals throughout an entire month starting today through November 7th. In this time of need, um, you know, there are a lot of Hoosiers without work and um, a lot of families really um, hungry, so it's our way of helping with that. Since the Million Meal Movement began in 2007, they have packaged more than 31 million meals for people right here in Indiana. If you would like to volunteer or help with the Million Meals event, you can go to millionmeals.org. Kevin, that sun is shining. And with our beautiful tower cam, we can stare at the sun and we're okay without sunglasses. How about that? No matter which way we would spin the tower cam, we'd come up with sunshine. If you were uh, looking for clouds today, you didn't find them. This is 24 hours ago. And the clearing line behind that line of showers and even isolated thunderstorms that we had was stark. And it really created some beautiful shots. A lot of you say, uh, shared those with me on Facebook. Love the pictures. This is from uh, Indianapolis around 6 o'clock or a little after before the sun set. And you can see the golden horizon as the uh, showers and thunder showers moved on. We could use more rain. We'll have a chance Thursday. There are the current temperatures with blue sky and southwest winds, all upper 60s to lower 70s. The change here as we go through the evening, once the sun sets, fall off rather quickly into the mid-50s by the time we get to midnight. Tomorrow, the magic number, the warmest temperature within the seven-day forecast by a lot. Enjoy the mild temperatures. You can see what happens as we get to Thursday. Temperatures cool down with some scattered showers. Don't plan on a lot of rain. It will be disappointing if you're counting on a lot of rain. It'll be a tenth of an inch probably or less. There are your hourly temperatures tomorrow with the wind gusting over 30 miles per hour. As you look at your Thursday planner, there's the change. A few showers. Temperatures start their trend down. They won't complete the mission, though, until we hit rock bottom on Saturday. More on that in just a little bit. Chris? 
A month into the school year, teachers are struggling to keep kids up to speed. We talked to a principal at an elementary school in Arizona, and she says students are about five to six months behind. Some kids who should be reading by now simply are not. She says when you think about it, most students have not been inside a classroom since March. One challenge for teachers has been teaching at home students while also giving one on one attention to students who are in the classroom on top of the challenge that can be technology. It's day to day whether or not technology works is huge. And if you think about it, I mean, we've only been hybrid for about three weeks, but before that we were all digital learning and we would have full days where we wouldn't have any technology. So basically we would have to tell the kids just, you know, go into Google Classroom and practice your multiplication facts. Now Sarah Lewis says it is difficult to hear when young kids are learning on their parents' cell phone because they don't have a computer. She says she is proud though of just how fast teachers have become tech savvy, the level of understanding for most parents and the willingness to be flexible on top of just how proud she is of the kids. Five-year-olds do not understand that you can't walk over to your friend's desk and ask them what they're reading or what they're coloring. But as far as wearing the mask and being okay when we ask them to step away or ask them to put the, I mean, it is incredible. The little kids are able to do it. Lewis says that she wants people to know just how difficult it is for teachers to balance teaching online students and those in the classroom. She says many are fearful of the pandemic, but they do realize they have a job to do. Voter registration databases are becoming a target for cyber attacks this election. Usher Qureshi shows us one idea that is already helping stop criminals' plans. Intelligence officials and security experts agree that cyber attacks like the ones perpetrated during the 2016 presidential election are not a thing of the past. There's no reason to believe attacks like that would not happen in this election. Jake Brower is the author of Democracy in Danger, how hackers and activists exposed fatal flaws in the election system. Brower says the two most serious vulnerabilities lie in voter registration databases and election night returns data. The hacking of either, he says, could cause chaos at the polls or spawn conspiracy theories about the election's outcome. We're already seeing ransomware attacks on databases, and we're already seeing um, things like um, fake websites to mimic um, election websites. We are trying to help people protect against those kinds of attacks. Mary Hanley is the associate director of the Cyber Policy Initiative run out of the University of Chicago. For the first time, through their Cyber Surge program, they're connecting a network of 250 volunteer cybersecurity experts with U.S. state and local election officials ahead of the 2020 election. We can help answer basic questions um, about just general cyber hygiene, but we can also help election administrators understand how to remediate vulnerabilities that they've already identified. Volunteer technologists like New Mexico-based Chris Perkins say election officials need to be able to see where potential assaults can present themselves. Once you have that visibility on your attack surfaces, um, then you can start to detect those anomalies and, and things that start to look like uh, suspicious activity. In a highly polarized atmosphere, cyber experts say it's even more important to ensure that security breaches are quickly identified and contained. I'm Usher Qureshi. Usher, thank you. And scientists have lost track of so-called murder hornets. Yeah, not the news you want to hear, right? Scientists have tried attaching a couple different tracking devices to some of them that they've captured. Uh, while they haven't found a nest that they're looking for, they say they are zeroing in on the general area. Uh, it's interesting to note that the biggest threat of these pests is the damage that they can do to honeybee hives. Now, the owner of Amazon celebrating something other than sales on the start of Prime Day, Jeff Bezos' blue uh, space company, Blue Origin, successfully launched a rocket from Texas today. The group works with NASA to test new landing technology that could help put astronauts back on the moon. They need a couple more flights before they do try to carry people into space. Now, finally, in our lineup today, stores are advertising their holiday deals this week with everyone competing with Amazon's Prime event. We have why you may not need to rush to buy right now.
Well, it is day one of Amazon Prime Day, and it's not the only place trying to get your business right now, as Target is also starting their own day of deals. Walmart actually got a head start starting offering the deals on Sunday. Now, Popcart's a browser extension that helps you compare prices online. They say you might want to walk away from deals on last year's electronics. Those may appear to be amazing deals because of the markdown. And that's an interesting point about shopping online is that what seems sometimes to be like a very good deal because you see a you know, 50% off may not actually be the best deal you can get. This week isn't your only chance to score savings either. Amazon and those other retailers want to spread out your shopping over a longer time period because they're going to face incredible pressure to deliver everything on time, to deliver many more items than they have in previous years. Now, the competitive prices Walmart and Target offer this week may be foreshadowing what's to come on Black Friday. Experts say if their prices are better than Amazon's this week, experts say that you can just expect that in November as well. Now, it is what so many kids and parents look forward to around the holidays. Yep, meeting Santa. This year, how you do that, though, could be different with COVID. We're actually seeing uh, quite a bit of demand right now for virtual visits with Santa. Tomorrow, how parents schedule one of those, but also the changes that mall Santas are making in hopes that guests still show up. Well, I think you'd agree with me, our weather's rarely in a state of perfection. Too warm, too cold, too wet, too dry. Our current stretch without significant rain, 56 days. We'll talk about whether we'll get things back in balance. Our rain opportunities unveiled in the next half hour. That's all for the news at 530. The news starts again right now.